Hi, I'm Katherine Sutherland. And I'm Nakia Baris. <laughs> and you're watching 96, 96 Studios. Studios. Hi! Well, hello! Hi! Hi, Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. Hi. This is Ken. Hi, Ken. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. Cool. It took you two hours to do the Oh, the nice. Yeah. You can give them as gifts? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. I actually made you guys something. Thank you. Here, you buy the Weedle, I'll go Caterpie. And then we will and then we will evolve them and then we'll have a competition which one can get more harder. We'll have a hard off. I said it and I meant it. Alright. Yeah, I'm cutting the audio from that. <laughs> Dude, this, this is, is awesome. awesome. Hey everybody, I'm Cisco with 96 Studio. I'm here with Cody and we Hi. are <laughs> <laughs> and we are here with our sixth and seventh, seventh ranger, right? Well, my seventh and eighth. Your seventh and eighth. Um, you guys introduce yourselves. Nine, ten, and twelve. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Catherine Sutherland, the pink pink ranger, uh, second pink ranger to Angel Johnson, um, and my husband, Ari Casio, and Turbo, and the Turbo. I am Nakia Boris. I play Tanya Sloan in Power Rangers CEO Turbo and the Turbo. Well, I'm glad you guys got to go through a whole line of uh, fans today. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have done this for weekends going to Con and Power, Power Morphin Con, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, here's the question I have. After the Power Rangers show, what did you guys go on and do after Movies, TV shows, what was life after the Rangers? Um, I continue to act. Uh, I've done some of the characters but we've added uh, an inspirational message to it as well it's, it was so fun so fun to film it didn't have it it, did, it had a lot of bumps I had to fire the director and the DP that was a whole situation but it ended up being being great yeah was that was the time frame when we get to see that on screen oh, well I have to get it sold first okay. um, the deal that was offered to me I haven't accepted so um, I have to get it sold first and you know hopefully by the end of this year God willing I continued acting after I left the show and then um, around 2003 I kind of stepped away I had a hard time with the, the, the business side of things and auditioning and stuff I, I found it very challenging for my personality <laughs> so I kind of took a step back and, um, and then I had children and got married and um, it kind of lured me back in I started doing commercials and 
voiceover work and jobs here and there. And now we have our YouTube channel that we do and, um, and coming back for the 30th anniversary um, of Power Rangers. And yeah, we'll just do oh, stuff when it comes yeah, out. I, I, I saw yeah. you. A little bit of the trailers of it. I'm trying to stick away from it. I want no spoilers. I don't want to know who's in it. I just want to watch it. Yeah, right it's gonna be a surprise. Yes, yes, exactly. You know, we're, we're 90s kids. We grew up in the 90s with second gen Power Rangers with Zeno and everything. Um, same thing I told uh, David Gillis. I'll tell you guys. You guys are the first superheroes that everyone can relate to, especially for, for girls. You know, there's not there wasn't a lot of representation for uh, girl representation as for heroes. But Power Rangers. Always had the yellow ranger, you always had the pink ranger, and there was a there was a push forward. And for us, I always wanted to be a lady. <laughs> I always wanted to be a blue one. So but and that's why and I told people David Gillis, you guys are the first rangers. And you guys have been navigating that in your long young lives. How'd you guys navigate that? But when I joined the show in ninety five it was it was really at its like height. Um, the movie was just coming out and I had no idea what I was stepping into. The worldwide popularity of the show was at the premiere of the movie and it was like they were rock stars, it was crazy. Um, so I I feel very grateful to be part of the franchise. I think we always talk about when you're on the show, you're kind of insulated because you're working all the time. Um, so you don't realize the impact of how many people you're reaching. Um, and I think since we started doing conventions and signings and social media has, has been in our lives, um, we've had a lot more in, um, had a lot more contact with our fans and have realized like how far this show was spread and how loved it is. I was a college student at the time, so I didn't know what Power Rangers was. I just knew, you know, I was attending UCLA. I was in the School of Film and Television, so I was, you know, training to become a professional actress. And then I booked Power Rangers while I was a junior in college, and I continued to do them both. I didn't know, again, I didn't know what Power Rangers was, I didn't know how popular it was, and I really felt like I didn't know the scale of popularity until I started to do conventions and signings. Um, I remember the first convention I'd gone to, I was absolutely amazed that people remembered who I was, and, you know, remembered the episodes and could tell me play by play what I was doing, and I was like, what? I remember calling Kat, because I went on a, a Saturday, and I think she could only come on a Sunday, and I remember calling her, I was like, Kat? <laughs> I was like, there's a line of people. It was so shocking to me. Um, but I, I will say, you know, social media has definitely been an absolute blessing, I think, for, for everyone. You could, you know, tell people where you are. Well, it's twofold. I can't say it's always a blessing because there's a lot of negativity. But when it comes to conventions and, and things like that, I think it's very helpful. We used to get bags of mail, like fan mail would get sent to us at the studio. And they would bring us big bags of our fan mail. And we would go through it and read it handwriting and everything. It's just crazy. So now it's it's much more instant. Like a fan messages us and I can message them back right away or um, you know they can find out where we're gonna be and they need us. So, so it's a lot more um, accessible. So so just bags of fan mail. So you probably yeah. never got my letter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember it now. <laughs> so speaking of like social media you guys you said you have a podcast on YouTube. Can you tell us more about that? Like what you do on there, what you talk about and would you have plans for it in the no. future? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we were doing a convention. We were in Scotland at the time, and um, we met these two um, guys who are very famous voiceover actors, Troy Baker and Nolan North. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Moby and Maggie yeah. from uh, Yes. Uh, God of War game. Yeah, God of War. Troy Baker done, also did um, Joker after uh, uh, what's his name retired. Yeah. Mark Hamill retired. They did Uncharted. Like yeah. uh, Nolan did Uncharted. Uncharted. They've done the Lego Deadpool. movies. Deadpool. They've done. They've done a million things. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. yeah. Nolan North and Troy Baker are very. I know those very guys are well really done. cool guys. Yes. So they were um, at a at a convention with us, and at the time they had a YouTube channel called Retro Re Retro Replay, mm -hmm. where they would play the video games that they voiced and, and talk about it. And we were like, we were seeing lines of people for them and, and most of the people were watching their YouTube channel and thinking, you know, wow, we really should do something like this for our, because they were best friends and we're best friends and like, we should do something like this for our fandom. So, so we came up, we were literally at the convention, um, not very busy. <laughs> so we were like, huh, let's take the time and figure out what we want to do. And so we came up with all these different ideas and we were like, well, what do fans want the most? They want to know what we were doing in episode 355. They want to know what was happening behind the scenes. They want. So we said, wouldn't we want 
watched episodes and talked about what was happening behind the scenes. So that was our initial idea goal. And we so empowering just playback. Yes. It's going to be a nostalgia of what it was like. Yes, yeah, so with the uh, VHS tape that yeah. was part of our logo. And so we edit the first episode, and it's about to air. And we get a copyright claim from Hasbro and Toy Company because we're showing some of the footage. And I tried to email them and let them know what we were on the show. We're just talking about us being on the show. Didn't care. So the, our 20 minute episode right before launch day goes down to five minutes because we have to edit out every single thing that has Power Rangers in it. Yeah. And that kept happening to us. Yeah. And so we were like, well, what are we going to do? This was what our whole YouTube channel was about. And I see it late at night thinking and praying and asking God for things. And so uh, that's what I would do. She's a, a morning person. I'm a night person. So, I, you know, I asked God and I just start writing down all these different ideas. And I was like, God, what if we do this? What if we do that? What if? So that's how we came up with all of these original ideas, which I think, you know, the copyright claims were a blessing. Yeah, it was. Because it brought so much more. We have live interviews. We have a, um, a game show that's called Who Knows It Best. We have a whole, you know, set displayed and who knows it best is uh, Power Ranger fans go up against actual Power Rangers and who knows the trivia the trivia the, yeah, the, yeah. the show man. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've had Power Rangers against Power Rangers and then the winner gets you know bragging rights and the loser eats a disgusting sundae and we can She's put whatever yeah anchovies with yeah, ice, ice cream and pudding and yeah. it's disgusting yeah. but um, yeah so we've been able to bring a lot of um, great things to our to our YouTube channel because of the copyright claims. And then it, we started the channel right before COVID, so um, it, it actually was a blessing for her and I to have this project together to be creative um, and to bring the fans, uh, you know, give them some, a sense of community because they weren't able to go to conventions and signings and all those things, but they, they feel like that's like their, their outlet, their social outlet. So it's been such a blessing. We have a Discord channel that we created for our members um, to be a membership event. Because if someone's going through a hard time, they all come around each other and support each other, and it's become this like safe place for for this fandom now. So it became so much more than we ever anticipated. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I'm getting from this is we need more copyright claims to go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> to get well, creative. The yes. last copyright yes. claim, if I remind you, we lost out on 30 grand. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so here's a whole story on that. You guys are copyright claims. Our first video that went viral. We made over 4.4 million views. Wow. Could not collect no revenue from it <gasps> because we used copyrighted music. Yeah. Oh. It was a, if everyone, if everyone talks to us, oh. it's always the Godzilla video. That was the one that shot us up to, now we're at 12,000 Why didn't you change it? Because YouTube has, just take oh, the music they, out. They, it was the whole thing of when I did it, I didn't know what exactly what I was doing. It was that one strike. And then if I would take it down, we'd lose everything. Yes, yeah, no, 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 but you can replace the music within now. Okay. Like, you, yes, you can, they have a whole library of music. You can just wipe that music out and replace it with new music. Because we were always worried if we took it down and re-edited their music. No, you don't have to re-edit it. You don't have to. You can literally take the music. I have to do it. Yeah, I mean, I had to learn all of this. So you take the music out while it's still there. And you don't have to, and then you replace it with one well, of their songs. The, the reason we used it, because it was a, we, we painted toys and Godzilla was a thing. And the reason you wanted to use that one song was because it was in a Godzilla movie. Yeah. And everybody loved it. Everyone loved it. And we were like, oh, this is great. And, it, and we were like, oh, we got a copyright strike. And it was like 100 views. We are like, ah, whatever. And then next thing you know, it just picked up steam. Wow. And it just kept on going and going. And next thing you know, it was like, hey, we hit 1,000 views. Hey, we hit 1,000 subscribers. Hey, we hit 10,000 views. We hit 10,000 subscribers. Wow. And next thing you know, it didn't stop. It's at 4.5, 4.4 million. That's and crazy. And, you know, we're at 12,000. We, we build our community here out of Tucson. And, and, we, 
everybody knows us. We come in, half the, the line you guys had today, and everybody's like, hey, you guys. Yeah. But no one cares who we are. We go to Walmart, and people, we come to a shop here. It was like, they know dude, who's that guy? I think one time at James Conco, we were just walking around, wherever, and some guy came up and was like, hey, we're a bunch of guys. You're from Tucson. Yeah. Yeah, it's us. Oh, it happened hey. the, before Tucson, uh, was it? Well, Tucson shut down. It happened with their, their mom and her son, too. Yeah. See, all this stuff, my wife doesn't believe it. She's like, no one knows who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to know who you are. I'm like, I swear, some people talk to us. I'm That's a big deal. I am. Big deal. Someone deal. offered us like five bucks for our YouTube channel. Let's go. No. no. <laughs> you guys are talking about your guys' YouTube channel, how we're in the playback. You, you guys don't do seasons. You guys do by episode. And I'm guessing 2023, you guys have plans. You write things down. Who are the next ranger that we can see coming up this year? Um, Sierra. Sierra Hannah. Um, uh, Michael Gutter, who actually harder to record content and do do the things that we need to do but in in between the time of covid um we decided to start a podcast as well so we have two seasons of that it's called super chat with kat and nakia and you get a more intimate um i guess understanding of us more as, about, like, as yeah our, our personal lives it's outside of power rangers we do have some power ranger guests on there but it's not about power rangers it's about what they're doing now um, life after Power Rangers. Um, we've had different topics. Our first first season, we had quite a bit of Power Rangers on there. What are they? Where are they now? We talked about momhood. We talked about raising. I have two boys. She has a boy and a girl. Mine are men now. Hers are in the teenage years. So we just talked about some personal things that we've moved up with. We've talked about racism. We've talked about um, COVID. Yeah. Yeah. We've had guests. talking about that, I don't think they were talking about you guys. Aww. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate you. Thank you. We appreciate you. Yeah, because every ranger we've met, you know, they've always been really appreciated the fact that they only want an extra mile for them and always want to talk to them if you know them or something to be, you know. Um, and we've met people before that are like, yeah, okay, cool, we love that for you. But every time we meet someone who's a ranger, it's always a great experience. Oh, that's good to hear. Y'all are heroes on and off the camera. Aww, thank you. It's just, yes. it's just yes. you, Cisco. Yes. <laughs> it's racial. <laughs> it's actually amazing. Um, she still gets up with us. 
Oh, it's me, Lily. She likes to hear it. Yeah, she loved me. I ain't heard you today. I got yelled at. <laughs> but I really appreciate you guys. I'm Cisco. I'm Cody. Cody. Signing off for us over here at 96 Studios in Tucson, Arizona at Harley Stories and Comics here at the Tucson Mall. Um, catch you guys in the next video. Next video! Word. <laughs> Let's put you in the tank. Bring in the Chris Rock like that. It was fucking like Chris Rock. It was Chris Tucker. But I got exactly what you said. He said Chris Rock? Yeah. Just a minute. He was doing this. He goes, You got prescription? Alright. So, hearing of some Legos that are in the back. That's. This is all Legos. All Legos. Oh my god. Oh my god. Where did she get these all from? Legos. Texas. Texas. Texas or taxes? Plural of Legos. Legos. So it's Legos already plural or non plural? It's considered plural. So it's like yeah, two sons? Yeah. So but like if there's multiple, multiple Legos. Legos. You can say Lego sets. But like you don't say ego, you say ego. No, that's yeah. You don't say niece, you say geese. But would it, would it be would it mises be mices? No, because mice is already plural. Are you gonna try this with the parrot? This video, this is gonna be the most riveting one you guys have ever <laughs> <laughs> They said the other day in the ball game that it's cheese it, it's a cheese it. Yeah. But a plural of cheese it is cheese it crackers. Well look if you look at like when they came out and said that a single M and M is a was a lentil. Really? Yeah. That's a single M&M. It's called a lentil. That's the company said this Wait, shit. Wait, so M&Ms M &M are lentils? Lentil. One single M&M. One M&M &M. is a, a, a lentil. Is a, a lentil. But a lentil is something you... So when I share a bag with my wife, it's usually one. That's a lentil. Oh, okay. you, didn't yeah. get, you didn't get an M&M. You got a lentil, lentil. of yeah. an M&M. Like, so honey, would you like one. a lentil? <laughs> <laughs> I, I named, like, some insane amount of money. Because they, they want our, our channel name because they're building stuff with 96 Studios, whatever. Technology or whatever. I'm like, I'll give you 10 grand. I'll, give you, I'll totally rebrand everything for 10 grand. I'm like, no, you're insane. Like, yeah, no. So, but, um, so you guys do YouTube stuff, we're gonna have to edit all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too. cut out the part where you talk about yourself. <laughs> yeah. Please do, I don't wanna have a big head on Off that. the record. Off the record.